Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here on the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a look at motor pole counts. We're gonna answer some of the questions that you guys have left about pole count relating to different topics, such as the speed of the motor, the torque of the motor, the efficiency of the motor, even the startup hesitation that we may see from these motors. What we wanna identify is, is there any difference between the two, four, and six pole motors when we look at them specifically. Then at the very end of the video, I will talk about my specific preference when it comes to selecting a brushless motor versus the pole count that it uses. So let's get started and talk about our first area within pole count, and that deals with the speed of the motor. So when it comes down to the speed of the motor, we can really look at it as a couple different things. So the first thing is that a small pole count motor will have a bit of a speed advantage. However, hear me out. So what the speed advantage actually means is that if we compare that to the limitations of the speed control, the speed control can only do certain amount of electrical RPM. And when you look at a two pole motor, that is going to be the highest amount of mechanical RPM that that speed control would be able to do. If you were to compare the two pole motor versus a six pole motor, and it would work for the same as our four pole motor as well, it would not be able to mechanically rotate that six pole motor up to the same speed as a two pole motor. Now when it really comes down to our applications for let's say radio controlled cars, we really don't exceed the 60,000 RPM mark too frequently. In that case, most modern speed controls will be able to handle for radio control cars that 60,000 RPM with any pole count motor between the two and six mark. It'll cover all of our common options. When it comes to speed of the motor, there are plenty of different examples of both two and four pole motors easily capable of hitting that 60,000 mark. There's not gonna be much of a difference. Now, when we talk about torque, it gets a little bit more interesting. And the fact that if you are trying to compare a two pole versus six pole motor, and you're trying to identify which one is going to have more torque, it ultimately comes down to the KV value. The typical question I get is if I'm looking at a 2,500 KV motor, and I have identified two motors that fit that exact specification. One is a six pole and one is a four pole motor. Which one is going to provide me with more torque? If that's the question, the very simple and easy answer, knowing nothing about the motors that are in question, is that if they have a KV of 2,500, they essentially both can produce the same amount of torque per amp. So now the question is, which motor can ultimately deliver more amount of current? Because if one motor can deliver more amount of current, that means that that motor is going to produce more overall torque output. And to put this very simply, it could be either option that delivers more overall output torque. It really comes down to the effectiveness of that specific motor, especially if you're comparing two motors within the same diameter and length can size, as well as KV. Then we're really talking about the efficiency levels of each one of those motors. And that is a perfect segue into our next topic, which is dealing with the efficiencies of the motor. So right off the bat here with efficiency, I wanna talk about motor manufacturers. So when you look at all the different motors that are available, there are motor manufacturers that specialize in your six pole, your four pole, and your two pole motors. Each motor manufacturer has a preference. For example, one motor manufacturer will produce a brushless inrunner and only use the two pole configuration for all models of their entire product line. Whereas another motor manufacturer may have selected four poles and models all of their entire product line line right off of that four pole structure. So when we're talking about efficiency, we know that each motor manufacturer has made these decisions based off of selecting the one that they think has the most advantages. And it is true that there are certain things within a two pole motor structure that can get them better efficiencies. We won't dive into that list because it is quite extensive. And for the same reason, a four pole motor manufacturer has selected that four pole count because they believe that there's some advantages that they can get 
within that configuration. And I'm sure that the motor manufacturer, if you asked for that list of items on why their motor is going to be more efficient than the competitors with a different pull count, they will give you a significant wish list of things that you'd love to have. But truth be told that another motor manufacturer has figured out other different ways that allow their motor to be just as efficient. So essentially at this point, we've covered three topics. When you're looking at efficiency, torque, or the speed of a motor, you cannot understand any one of these three items by looking at pole count alone. This does not do it. What is more going to influence the difference of these motors is going to be the values that we typically see, the KV value that we see, the IO value, which is the no load current, and also the internal resistance of the winding of that motor. These parameters are going to help identify which motor is going to be more efficient. Lastly, let's talk about the startup hesitation and how that compares when you're looking at a two pole versus a four pole and so on motor. So I have here a motor in front of me and this happens to be a four pole brushless motor. If I were to rotate this, it is somewhat difficult to rotate from uh, just by twisting it with my hand here, but I can feel a whole bunch of steps in the shaft, kind of like bumps. Uh, as I rotate this shaft in a complete circle. And there's multiple different steps and bumps as I rotate it. Now each one of these steps that I am referring to takes a bit of torque to overcome it. I have to make sure I apply a certain amount of force and torque in order to actually rotate the motor shaft. And when I do that, I have to put in a bunch of torque and then when I get to it about halfway through the step, it unloads and releases and I actually get negative torque, which means the motor shaft accelerates itself to the end of that particular step. So this is what is known as cogging torque. And the reason why I'm referring to this thing called cogging torque is because it does influence the startup hesitation that we may see. Any type of load that you place on a motor and it must accelerate it, on a sensorless motor when we're at zero RPM is going to need to be overcome by the motor and speed control working together. And this particular motor happens to be a four pole motor. And the question that I typically get is people have noticed that these four pole motors, at least the ones that they've tried, are actually having quite a bit of this cogging torque in order to actually rotate the shaft of the motor. And when they try a two pole motor, they don't see this. Does that mean that higher pole count motors have more cogging torque to get past those steps in the shaft as we rotate it versus a two pole motor? Now the quick answer here is that it may seem that way. However, it doesn't have to be that way. Motor manufacturers have the freedom to complete their motor design in any which way that they feel is best. In some cases, they may trade this cogging torque for other areas of the motor design. Maybe efficiency is more of something that they want to tackle. Maybe it's the amount of current that they're trying to be able to withstand within the motor. And perhaps there's other priorities within the design list that have a higher priority than the actual cogging torque of the motor. I think it was around 2008, nine or 10, somewhere there, maybe even a little bit earlier than that, where a motor manufacturer got called out for the amount of cogging torque that their motors have. And as a result, what they did is they ended up changing it. Now the four pole motor stayed, they did not get rid of the four pole. All they did was change the motor design to reduce the amount of cogging torque that that motor had within it. In conclusion to everything that we just talked about concerning startup hesitation, even the pole count there has relatively little effect. Ultimately, what it comes down to is motor design that is going to change and alter all the effects that we're looking at. Now, the final question here is which pull count do I prefer within my radio control vehicles? And the answer to this question is actually quite simple. When it comes to pull count, I would say that my favorite pull count is the four pull motor. Not because of the performance that I get out of the motor or the amount of current I can pull. None of that is included within my reasoning. The real reason why I prefer four pull is just because the market seems to be more full of four pole motors. It does seem that motor manufacturers have chosen the four pole strategy to build their entire product line than any of the other pole counts, especially when you're looking at brushless motors for radio control boats or radio control cars. 
After all of this, what can we say about the motor that you should drop in your radio control vehicle? Should it be a two, four, or six pole motor? Well, to be honest, the advice that I would give you is completely ignore the pole count of the motor that you're looking at. What I would suggest doing is follow the specifications of the motor. What kind of performance output do you get from that motor? Ultimately, that is going to make the biggest difference. It doesn't matter if it's a four pole motor, two pole motor, or six pole motor. At the end end of the day, the only thing that's going to make a difference in your build is those specifications and how well that motor performs. That pretty well covers all of the content that I wanted to include in this particular video. I hope you were able to have something here as a takeaway that you can use in your next video. As always, like the video if you do, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you next Monday.